Hello, welcome to Chairside Live. I'm Megan Strong. And I'm Will Schmidt, registered dental assistant here at Gladwell Dental. We've got something pretty special for you today. It's an exciting day. Want to know why? Megan, I'm always excited to be here with you, mm. but I do understand you have some very important news. Yes. So our first ever fellow in the Glidewell Dental Fellowship Program, her name's Dr. Taylor Manalili, and she has got her first ever case that she's sharing with our viewers. So she's presented with a completely edontulous patient, and she's going to start with the preliminary impression using open tray technique. This is going to set the foundation for the eventual Bruxer full arch implant prosthesis. Okay, so let's get that PVS impression material flowing. It's all yours, Dr. Manalili. Today's case will demonstrate a full arch open tray impression. Similar to many patients that you will see in your own office, this patient presents with implants already placed and integrated. Prior to today's appointment, I have identified several things. The specific type of implants which were placed, the diameters, and if there is a restorative platform shift involved. It is worth noting that with some systems, the diameter of the implant body is different from the restorative platform. For today's video, I am going to demonstrate the very basics of taking an open tray impression. Keep in mind that this is a preliminary impression using individual transfer copings and a stock tray. This impression will be utilized to provide our lab with valuable foundational information. Once you have identified this information, you will have to order the desired components. In this case, a combination of both 3.5 millimeter and 4.5 millimeter platform inclusive tapered implants were placed. For this case, we ordered inclusive open tray impression copings. Here you can see that this item comes with several components. A laboratory guide pin, which has less threads and is longer, making it easy for the technician to utilize in the lab. An impression guide pin, which has more threads and is shorter, making it easier to utilize intraorally. A plastic blockout sleeve. This is placed over the guide pin to allow for clean, an easy identification of the copings throughout the impression. The plastic component can easily be cut to the appropriate height. A transfer coping. This coping has an engaging component that allows you to capture the timing of the internal connection. Now that we have identified the components, let's take our impression. The first step is removing the healing abutments and inserting our impression copings. As we remove each healing abutment, the soft tissue will start to collapse, which can be uncomfortable for the patient. To avoid collapse of the soft tissue, as each healing abutment is removed, I immediately replace it with an impression coping. I like to take radiographs for confirmation that the copings are fully seated and not caught on the soft tissue. Radiographically, you are looking to see that the impression coping is flush with the implant platform. Once all the copings are confirmed, I then make adjustments to the stock tray. I like to mark the tray directly in the mouth to identify the location of the copings. Utilizing a coarse cut carbide burr, I then perforate holes into the tray accordingly. There are trays on the market that have pop-out sections for your convenience if you do not want to go through the trouble of cutting holes in one of your stock trays. Here you can see that the plastic blockout sleeves were each cut to the appropriate size and placed over the guide pins. I always try the tray in at this point to verify that the transfer copings are correctly aligned with the holes in the tray. I make sure that I know my path of insertion, which I have marked here with a black line. The last thing you want is for one of your transfer copings to not pop through the tray and get lost in the impression material. Once I verify that there is enough room around each coping, I like to place a soft wax on top of the holes I just created. Here I am using blue periphery wax. This will keep my impression material in the tray, making locating the guide pins during the impression much easier. At this point, we are ready to take our impression. Just like taking an impression on natural teeth, we want to capture as much information as we can. I like to syringe a light body PVS material around the transfer copings while my assistant loads the tray with a heavy body PVS. Be sure to fully seat the tray so the guide pins poke through the wax. Before the PVS fully sets, be sure you can identify the top of each transfer coping. Once the impression material fully sets, you can easily remove any impression material in the plastic sleeve, allowing for easy access to the top of the guide pin. Unscrew and completely disengage each guide pin before removing the impression from the patient's mouth. As soon as the impression is removed, replace the healing abutments right away to avoid soft tissue collapse. 
At this point, the guide pins will have to be inserted back into the impression or sent back to the lab, where they will be used to attach the analog component prior to the impression being poured. This is an example of how to attach an analog to the impression coping. The analogs are ordered separately and can be attached using either of the provided guide pins. If you do not wish to attach the analogs yourself, make sure that you send the guide pins along with your impression to the lab. Thank you for joining us. Back to you, Megan and Will. Well, thank you so much for that, Dr. Manalili. You are a great addition to the Gladwell family, and we are very excited to see the rest of this case in action. We are. But for today, that wraps it up for this episode. So on behalf of everyone here at Glidewell Dental, thank you so much for watching. And we'll meet you right back here next time. So let's get that PVS impression material flowing.